focus of the next half hour is commissioning and the language of commissioning and we will have Tom Meyer uh, lead us through the language of commissioning. Tom is the principal of Praxis Green, an international training and consulting company specializing in green, high performance and energy efficient mechanical systems. Among many activities, uh, Tom is a member of the Green Build Program Committee, member of the U.S. Senate's High Performance Building Council, sits on the IAPMO Green Technical Committee, and is an advisor to the Office of the Architect of the Capitol in Washington, D.C. Tom, we're ready to learn about commissioning. Thank you. Um, one of the things I hope this is a slight advance, otherwise I'm dissolving everybody. I have a friend of mine that's a Doctor Who freak, and I found out two of my daughters are. So one wonders when one picks up a strange object as to what it's going to actually do. What we're going to talk about is not just the language of commissioning. We're going to talk about what commissioning is altogether. It's hard to, dis to separate the two. One of the things that I would like to talk about is why is it important to even talk about commissioning? It's part of the change that we're evolving through. It's a necessary change. Commissioning is making sure that the owner gets what he wants, that the occupants get what they want. And we'll talk about how we get there from here. These are the learning objectives for the next 30 minutes. We're going to talk about what it is, how does it work, why go to the expense, which is always the number one question that people have, when is it done? Who's involved? And what's the advantage to the code official? First off, what is it? Well, in order to answer the question, what is it, we need to say what it isn't. And it's not Mamie Eisenhower breaking a champagne bottle against the bow of a ship. Unfortunately, there's a lot of staffers in Washington who think commissioning is basically that. It's the finalization of a construction project, whether it be a ship, a building, or whatever not understanding that it's actually a process. Let's talk about some myths about commissioning. It's just a bigger, better punch list. It's at the end of the construction to test the systems, like tab, right? Commissioning is just a fancy word for tab, and it costs a lot more in the end. A lot of building owners who do not understand the concept, or construction managers who do not understand the concept of commissioning feel it's an unnecessary expense. Isn't that something that the contractors are already supposed to do? Why am I paying extra for something that I should already be getting? And that's a, that's a reasonable question. We'll talk about why. But first thing we've got to understand is the commissioning, like the Great Wall of China, is a process, not an event. They did not go out one day and build the Great Wall of China. You do not come in to the end of a construction project and commission it. Actually, commissioning starts day one. You as a building owner sit there and go, you know, I'd like to build a building. Um, I want to make it 20 stories. I want to have this, uh, 18 of them residential, one of them office, and one of them stores. I want to have it this size. I want to have everything high efficiency. And you basically come up with a shopping list. Who's the first person that you're supposed to call? I'm going to tell you it's your commissioning guy. You call him up. You tell him, hey, come on over for coffee. Let's sit down and talk about this thing. Why him? Not, why not the project manager? Why him? Why not your favorite architect? And we'll find out in just a second why. Commissioning can be done on any anything in a building from HVAC to windows to doors. We've all heard about commissioning the mechanical systems. But I'm going to say that you can't commission just part of the building. You have to commission the building as a whole system. Now, where's the logic behind that? Can I commission the carburetor of a car? Yeah, I can tune it up. But does that make my car highly efficient? If I have a 90 mile per gallon carburetor, do I have an energy efficient car? One would say yes. What happens if the tires are square? You get my drift. So you have to commission it as an entire system. You have to have a car that is entirely 
energy efficient. Okay, what's the purpose of commissioning? Commissioning is a process for achieving, verifying, and documenting that the performance in its system, of the building and its systems meets the design intent and the owner's operational needs. Now, here's the key words we're just starting to see. We're verifying and documenting what? Design intent and the operational needs. Design intent. Remember when the building owner called in you as the commissioning specialist, commissioning agent, and said, let's sit down and have some coffee. Let me tell you about this dream building I want to build. This is what I wanted to be able to do. That's the design intent. Owner's operational needs. I'm going to have this type of retail. I want to have a couple of restaurants for the, for the office workers to be able to go down and have lunch. I, I want to have residential so some of the people that are in the residential support the offices and the restaurants. Okay, that's the operational needs. Then we start getting down to high performance and things like that. So we start developing this, this back of the envelope thing into a plan. The purposes of commissioning. Commissioning tests the operation of the equipment and building systems to ensure what? It operates like it was designed. Well, wait a second, if we design it to operate a particular way, doesn't it always operate that way? Engineers believe it does. Hey, if I make it this way, when it's done, it will be that way. Right? Everybody agrees. We never have any variation. The point of commissioning is to make sure that it doesn't vary. And it can satisfactorily need the, uh, meet the needs of the building throughout the entire range of operating conditions. That's another thing. You cannot do a snapshot of the building operation on May the 12th and expect it to perform that way December the 12th or under different load conditions, occupancy, whatever. You need to make sure that the building will operate according to the needs of the occupants and the desires of the owners through the whole spectrum of possibilities, weather, occupancy, use, whatever. That's critical to commissioning. Okay, there's commissioning types. There's four flavors of commissioning. New construction, retro commissioning, recommissioning and ongoing commissioning. And you thought it was simple. I was just going to talk about commissioning. Well, welcome to the uh, flavors. All right, how does it work? We're going to talk about those four types real quickly here. But how does it work? First off, if you want a shorthand version, there's lots of books out there, and we'll talk towards the end about different organizations that have commissioning programs. But let's talk about the ASHRAE guidelines. There's two of them. One is guideline zero. That talks specifically about the process of commissioning. Remember what I said? It's a process, not an event. Guideline 1.1 starts to hammer down into the mechanical systems. So that's a little bit more specialized. 